And we are back, and we just finished watching Fear Street Part 2, 1978. This is rated R. It clocks in at one hour and 49 minutes. It's from 2021, and it's currently streaming on Netflix. I enjoyed this a lot. I think I like this second part more than the first one. The first one was good, but this one really just... Yeah, the first, the first one was good, but... I. I... I also enjoyed this one a little bit more. I think because it, it wasn't like burdened with like setting up the whole premise. Yes. Not that they did a bad job, job. setting up the premise in the yeah. first one. They did, I thought they did a great job, but this, no. But this one really you were able to get spoke to, to like me. the the meat of it, and uh, it also had like sort of familiar tropes. You know, sleepaway camp. Yes. Yes. And uh, a slasher running around and killing people. people, but it also had the the elements of the first. The, the first one and that there's like some uh, some sort of supernatural stuff going on and uh yeah i, I enjoyed it it was it, was, it was hella hella entertaining i enjoyed the first one but yeah i think i like this one a little bit more the blurb on the netflix page i think said it it's a cross between it and friday the 13th which I, I guess I could see that, yeah. Cause it the, seems you know, like a really it's, good. It's the, yeah, it, the, it felt very eighties horror. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, everything I mean, about the. They, they definitely got the time period right. They got the music right. Kudos to like the art direction and staff because they did a really fantastic job of just like immersing you in that world. So we start off where the first part left off, and Dina and her little brother are going to see C. Berman to try to get to the bottom of what the hell is going on. And they've brought Sam in the trunk of their car. Who's, yeah. Possessed. And I really thought that she was going to have a more significant role in the second part. I thought that dog was going to be dead. I thought C. Berman was going to be dead. I guess something to look forward to yes, in, a, in yes. part three. Yes. That's right. Because, well, whatever. So the kids go to see this person who apparently saw the witch but then lived to tell because I think she's in the minority. I think everyone else has... Yeah, like she survived She survived a massacre and, and uh, there's there's this whole legend with this witch and uh, uh, people Sarah trying... Fear. To, Sarah Fear. And people trying to figure out how to end the curse that's plaguing this town. Uh, I, in the first movie, they, they set up the whole premise that there's like the golden town, Sunny Sunnyvale, S- vale. and, and then Shady Side, is which cursed. is just cursed. There's like every few years, there's another massacre of random Shady Siders. Somebody goes berserk and they, they kill them. And, and it's always chalked up to either insanity yeah. or now opioids. Insanity or drugs or, yeah. so, or something like that. Yeah. And but the truth but the, is but the truth that, is, and the thing that like a lot of people believe is that it's this curse that that uh, this witch who was was hung in, in Shady's like cursed the town, and that's why nothing good ever happened to say. If you live in Shady Side, you're guaranteed to have a crap life. Life, yeah. And you'll never leave. The, you, for some reason, you just can't leave town either. That's so weird, right? Yeah. I, that to me was like the weird. Like I would have as soon as I could have figured out how to get out of town, I would have left Dodge. Yeah. I mean, there's like... Hop on a bus and get the hell out of there. I mean, Sam moved from Shadyside to Sunnyvale, so it is possible. Maybe that's the thing. You gotta move to Sunnyvale. You can't move outside you can't move, of... You can't go you, you can't go from Shadyside to anywhere else, but if you hop over to Sunnyvale... But then again, yeah, she moved to Sunnyvale, but she's still gotten screwed. She was still a shady cider. And well, because she and was, her life was was is just as crappy as everybody else's. Right. Well, she got, she, mean, got a, she got a little reprieve living the cheerleader life in, yeah. in a Happy Town. In Happy Town. But guess what? It wasn't all wine and roses. She could, she couldn't see her girlfriend. But I think, she but broke I think, up with her girlfriend. But I think ultimately, the fact that she is a shady cider is what maybe led to her demise and also the fact that she touched the bones right yeah i think it's you have to bleed on the bones right which we're, we're she giving did. away little oh, de- we're giving six. away little details here but it's not really you won't uh, yeah they're not they're, enjoy the they're story they're not gonna shatter your enjoyment of, of anything really yeah it's just that there's there's little there's there, there's a 
there's a definite lore that they've built up that's that's pretty complex and and it's it's nice how they did it they, mm -hmm. they set up this whole thing and you could see how it's like panning out through these movies and and the next one you're gonna f i guess we're gonna find out everything right because we're going deep into the past we're going to 1666 yeah Again, real interesting use of storytelling going backwards in order to tell. And it's it's interesting how in the first one you get a lot of information, but this one definitely seemed to give a lot of information, especially since the characters had access to a certain book. And I think yeah, that there really propelled yeah. a lot of the storytelling and a lot of the lore we'll behind find out all more the about stuff. The whole legend. And you're yep. kind of you're kind of given a glimpse into some of the characters that you see in the first one, like the dude with the flannel shirt and sack over his head. Oh yeah, yeah. You like I didn't know, and then when you see him, I was like, oh, that's who that is. Yeah. There you go. My yeah. my boss from work. <laughs> <laughs> That character has the same name as my boss at work, which is a little weird. <laughs> the next time I talk to him, I'm like, so you're a axe wielding homicidal axe -wielding maniac at a sleepaway camp. <laughs> at a sleepaway camp. I think technically this movie, I thought it really created a great atmosphere and, and ambiance. Like, not maybe not ambiance. That's like not the right word. This isn't like a five star <laughs> dining it's not experience. Not an Italian diner. Yes, or... but uh, just really good atmosphere, good jump scares. Uh, I thought. I mean, it's it's not over the top. I mean, I feel like we've seen crazier stuff. Yeah, for I, sure, I don't. But... I don't. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I think there was like. I only registered like one jump scare and it didn't really get me. It's, I mean, it's, it's got, it's, it's got its tense moments, moments of peril. Yeah, yeah. I would say tense moments, but there was, there wasn't any, I, I, I at least for me, I, I didn't feel any kind of like scare. Yeah. I mean, like I didn't either, but I was more, I, I was more, honestly, I was more engrossed in the story and finding out how it would yes, progress. Yes. I think that, I, that intrigued me more than anything. So I wasn't yeah. really frightened. Or, or horrified. Uh, I think there was like a one little bit of shock. Like one of the deaths is particularly gruesome. It seems like in this move, in these movies, there's like one. They they save it for one death. Mm -hmm. Like in the first one, uh, there was that weird yeah. pie slice. I don't know what the hell that girl fell into. Yeah, <laughs> that was gruesome. Yeah, yeah. And then in this one, some guy gets like a lot of shots to the face with an axe. Yeah. So yeah, that and that was pretty, pretty gruesome. But the uh, all the other killings are are a bit muted. They're they're like a bit off screen or or a bit hidden. And I guess that kind of makes sense because a, a couple of little kids yeah get just wasted. Yeah. I mean, like, like they Good show, says four names when he's talking to yeah, and they show like the aftermath. They, they, you don't see the kids actually getting killed. You just hear like eh, and yeah. then like body parts. lights flashing on and off. But then afterwards, you just see like a leg or something on the ground yeah, a or something. Pool of blood, pool of yeah. blood, and some sort of pile. So that's, I mean, that part is jarring in a way. As a parent, yeah. I'm like, oh god, I'll never send my kids to yeah, sleep in camp. There. But uh, I think they did a really good job. I mean, the story to me was tight. All the characters were really good. All the kid actors. Again, we've we've had this conversation about how sometimes kid actors can kind of not bring their a game that's yeah. not the case no, here everybody everybody did a, everybody did a great job yeah. even like the kids that are on screen for two seconds before they're sacrificed to the yeah homicidal maniac maniac but um yeah i i really enjoyed this i would say maybe 12 and up we actually watched this with our 12 year old and she didn't seem too disturbed by it but again we Probably we've, we've kind of conditioned to, her to, to. We've desensitized her to the violence. So <laughs> movie violence. Hopefully that that that's movie a violence. working strategy in the future. Yeah, I mean movie violence. Yeah. Obviously, when we watch the news, it's different. Yeah. So, I'm gonna say twelve and up, right? Yeah. I mean, there's. Uh, 
There, I mean, there's okay, there's implied tw- 12 sexual, enough, 12 enough for the violence. There, there's some implied sexual there's some, content. I don't even, I wouldn't even say implied. Yeah. There's some <laughs> piston and butt cheeks. So <laughs> prepare yourself. <laughs> and that happens pretty early and it's jarring too. Yeah. It, but there's, it there's, fit. Two, there's two instances of that. Yeah. But it uh, fit. To me. It fits. Oh, it, it totally fits with the. I mean, come on, Friday the Thirteenth. It was like. Yeah. It was horny teenagers just getting butchered. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's how it always was. Yeah. yeah. That's Which, all. All those slasher films slasher were. films were from the late seventies. That was like one of the rules, right? <laughs> don't, don't have sex in the slasher movie. Or you're dead. But uh, yeah, I mean, although I thought, in this one, a lot of people got off. Well, did, the did, the, uh, the sunny got, <laughs> Yuck, oh, yuck. Ha, ha. They they didn't get their comeuppance. Like like I really I mean seriously the the girl from Cruel Summer. Cruel Summer. She, she should have got. Yeah, she was, was a like, bitch and what? she got away. Yeah, she got on the bus. She didn't get F her. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to know why Sarah targets Shady Side. I think because they were the ones responsible for her death. Hmm. Huh, interesting. That's well, what the, that's what it's that, that's what it seems to imply. I'm I'm you know what I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna go out and make a prediction and you find out oh it was the it was those uh, Sunny Valers all along and, and you know what and I, when I first or when like I that. first when I was watching the first one I was like how would you want to bet these Sunny Valers did some mumbo jumbo to make sure that yeah, Sarah I mean, the good didn't family. bother the, the fact that they mentioned the name Good so many times, times. And I'm betting. That the the priest who ends up killing Sarah and is or is a good or framing Sarah for whatever evil crime that she did is actually one of the goods. I don't think you're wrong. I, I, I'm pretty I, sure. Wasn't that one of the pictures that the Dina's brother showed? It was like a picture of like a Puritan, a puritanical kind of preacher. I don't know. I don't. I, don't, I could I don't swear remember. he said he said Reverend Good. Well, they've been there since the beginning. Kind of right, the that. goods. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just the top to bottom, really good storytelling. I, I'm I'm surprised this is an R.L. Stein property. I mean, the guy's made a career out of telling simple, scary stories. Stories, it's, yeah. This one's just a little bit more adult than his usual his fare. His usual fare. But it works. I mean, it's it's really, really, really well done, I thought. Yeah, I mean, I I am enjoying it. I am, I am enjoying it too. And yeah, I am looking forward to part three. I I too am looking forward to part three. Any kind of critique you think? Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe they could have sped things up a little bit in the beginning. I thought maybe the pacing was a little too slow in the beginning, mm-hmm. but it Fair really enough. was not. It wasn't detrimental. Like uh, it wasn't at the point where I was nodding off or anything like that. Right, right. Uh, I, you know what? Uh oh, here it comes. I understand. There's always like the the bullies and whatever, but in the beginning, when you're first introduced to Ziggy, she's basically being persecuted by these other kids, the the other the other the Stanley Vale or camp counselors. And they are literally going to kill her, <laughs> which is bizarre. Yeah, and it was that just was a like weird scene. It's like, and w- for what? For like, ten, like she, because they thought she stole ten dollars or something like that. Not yeah. even. It was like a couple of bucks. Yeah, you're gonna. I mean, they were literally gonna hang her up, and that girl was going to like took out a lighter and was gonna burn her to death. Yeah. But the, I thought the other interesting thing about that scene was that so Jeanette from Cruel Summer is obviously the alpha because you could see that the other kids didn't want to do it, but they were still on board to carry out the deed, even though they were sort of they you know like what? lamely were like, "Are you are you for real? Are some, you really going to do this?" Some people are just born to follow. You know? yeah. I was only following orders. Right. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Life comes back full circle. Yeah. Um, I'm trying R to think. To I don't. <laughs> uh, that's why I voted for. Him. I'm trying to think. I mean, I feel like 
I feel like it's not a perfect film, but I think the good of it outweigh the good of it outweighs the yep. bad. Yuck, yuck. Um, so I would highly recommend this. I'm going to give this a seven, I think. Or actually, I think I gave the last one a seven. So I'm going to give this one a seven and a half. I'll give it a seven and a half too. Yeah, it's. I thought it. I. They're both good. Good. <laughs> All right, but, that joke is done. <laughs> but I think I like this one a little bit better. Yeah, I I too enjoyed. And it this was a little, a little longer better. too. Yeah, it was a little bit longer. Yeah, it was it was just good. There were, and like there was some some like I, I enjoyed the the delving deeper into the whole lore and just like the weird creepiness, like when they're going through those tunnels, tunnels and they see that yeah. weird thing. Yeah, that was that was interesting to me. Like, what the hell is that? I don't know. So yeah, I I recommend uh, one and two so far. Very good. Very yeah. good. I'm, I'm in for this whole ride. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm, I'm to totally three. co-signed on it. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, we highly recommend Fear Street Part 2, 1978, which uh, I'm wondering, like, I wonder what the movies were in that time. I'm sure, like, horror was big in the late 70s. Like, the Italians were doing a lot of crazy stuff and, and whatnot. But yeah. I'm wondering, like... I mean, isn't that about the time when uh, the first Friday the Thirteenth came well, out? I mean, I think Halloween was around Halloween. that time. So that was like the first like slasher, or American slasher movie. Horror I mean, movie. That there was were like like you were you just said like the Italian horror movies like uh, Dario Argento so and, and all that and stuff. All that yeah. stuff. Where there was just weird craziness going on. Yeah, yeah. I it's funny Zombie. like it's it's funny watching those movies now. It's like. Some of it is so silly. It's a lot of it is just it's, ridiculous. You, you just basically have to enjoy bad things because yeah. they're terrible. They're terrible, but they're laughably so. Yeah, just people doing the weirdest things, saying the weirdest things, yeah. behaving in just completely bizarre ways. Yeah. What was that movie? Was that like an Italian horror movie? No, it was like American. The one with like the blind woman who touches the frame and then it starts, or that painting and it starts bleeding and then she freaks out and yeah. her and the dog run out. I, I think that was, uh, was that the gates of hell or something like something that? Something like yeah. that. No, no, I, I know exactly. In fact, when we were just talking about that, that's, I was thinking to think of, of that, that movie. <laughs> and then she just like movie. runs out of, like she, for Into some reason mist. she's it, she's in like a, a room in this like dilapidated hotel that this woman inherits. Yeah. And there's, there's this crazy blind woman living in there. And then she goes in there and talks to the blind lady and weirdness happens. And then the blind woman just like runs, runs out of the, the house. Hell out. And it's just like, wasn't she blind? She just yeah. ran down a flight of stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That movie was nuts. I, I like, if you ask me about, like I've seen it, but if you ask me about it, I couldn't tell you anything about it. It uh, was just made you know, And then, like, <laughs> yeah, somehow they end up in a morgue and, yeah. like, zombies are coming or dead yeah. people are coming alive. Yeah. And it was nuts. It was nuts. And then at th I think at the end, they're just, like, wandering around and, like, I guess it's supposed to be hell. Yeah. And there's just, like, a fog machine and rocks. <laughs> and like, oh, God, we're never going to get out of here. And that's the end. Yeah. All right, well, don't see that, but definitely <laughs> check out Fear Street Part 2, 1978. If you inherited a creepy hotel in Italy, just... Just, just run. Just don't don't even go. Don't just, even just, go. Just, just tell a realtor to sell a damn thing. Yeah, get your, get your liers. Is that what the Italian money is? Liers? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. All right, that's it from us, and we would bid you all a good night. Until the next time. Good night. Good night.